So in this video, I'm going to be talking about design patterns. This is moving a little bit away from the actual data structures, and it's talking about different strategies when we're writing, or in general, with object-oriented design. Uh, these three design patterns, for the purposes of this class, pretty much compose every, like, this is pretty much all you need to know for CSC 12. The three design patterns are inheritance, composition, and iterator. And then I'm going to be explaining each one one by one. So inheritance, I'll start with, it creates an is-a relationship. So an example would be if you had some class like, I'll say, like some class car. Maybe this car class has like an accelerate, decelerate, I don't know, a bunch of different methods within it. Now let's say I want to create a very similar yet slightly different method. Then I would, like let's say maybe I had one called sports car. So then I could create another class called sports car, which, no oh man, that was terrible, which extends Car. So, as you guys learned in earlier basic Java programming classes, when we extend a class, each class we write can only extend one other class. Right? So, if I do sports car extends car, when I extend it, whatever instance variables and whatever methods were in car, sports car now also has. In other words, Sports car is a subclass of car. Car is a superclass of sports car. So now let's say the only thing that I wanted to change was maybe car had some instance variable uh, max speed equals like, let's say like 100 miles per hour. Now maybe in my sports car, I want all the methods to work the same, except maybe now I'll change this new instance variable. I'll change it to max speed equals maybe like 150 or something like that. So basically, inheritance is a, you have some generic, not generic necessarily, but some vaster class and then you're making a specific a sports car is a car so my sports car does all the functions of the car but it might have some specific things you know meant specifically for sports car so I'm not going to go too deep into it but that's that's basically the a good summary of inheritance is just you extend something so you're inheriting whatever this thing already had so the second one is composition. A lot of people usually mix up inheritance and composition. So the, the easy way to think about it, so inheritance, you inherit stuff. So this is a car, like you get inheritance from your parents. So you are a, whatever your last name is. With composition, it's has a. So think of maybe the human body is composed, so composition composed of different organs. So maybe, I have some class called uh, called heart, and maybe heart has some methods like pump blood and whatever else the heart does. <laughs> Let's say we have another class called lung, maybe another class called brain. Composition is when I then create some class body which within this class I have instance variables one of type heart one of type lung and one of type brain so I'm using I'm not I'm not inheriting from these classes I'm not just extending them and then modifying it I'm making something that uses these in its own way. 
So my body class is composed of, so it has a heart, lung, and brain. This is usually my favorite way of making an anecdote about it is with the human body because that's a pretty nice example of some larger being that uses much smaller body things to do different functions. So my overarching body has a heart, has a lung, has a brain. That's essentially composition. So in terms of CSE 12 with data structures, an example might be if I create some linked list class, maybe a double, a doubly linked linked list, that means that it has a front, or well, that means that each each node has a next and a previous pointer. Maybe I use that to create a stack or a heap, which I'll talk about later. But maybe I'll just have that as an instance variable, and then I'll do basic method calls. So we'll talk about that a little more, but that's the basic gist of it, is you use pre-existing classes as instance variables. So you have them inside you. You have a, it has a heart, lung, brain, not is. And then the last of them, which is relatively unrelated to the other two, is called the iterator pattern. So I'll scroll down. So iterator, what does that mean? So from the English language, you should know to iterate through something just means basically to cycle through whatever it is you're iterating through. It's basically cycle. So if we have, so an iterator, it's basically some simple data structure that allows for the cycling through all of our elements or iterating through all of our elements in a data structure. And then you should keep note the difference between iterator and iterable. Iterator is the actual pattern name. It's the, it's the name of this design pattern. Iterable is an interface that anything that's, or, uh, okay, so it's an interface pretty much that you int implement. So you would use the iterator pattern in theory, but you would be directly implementing the iterable interface. So keep track between the difference between these two words. Iterator is the design pattern. Iterable is the interface that the design pattern uses. So what does this mean? It means that I should have some method in my whatever data structure I'm creating. I'll use a different color now. So whatever data structure I have, it should have oops, it should have some iterator method. That what does that do? It creates an iterator object. An object of type iterator. That object should have three methods. It should have has next. next and remove. So I'm going to explain what each of these does. So let's say I have some data structure, a bunch of elements, so each of these little squares is filled. So my iterator, it would create an iterator object that starts at the first index. If I have any elements, then if I type in, if I run has next, that would return true. If I'm at the end of it, so there's no current element, this would return false. So if I call next, what does that do? Next returns this element, and then it shifts my cursor one over. And then remove, the precondition is I must have called next. I had to have called next, otherwise it'll throw an illegal state exception. You have to have called next. Then if you call remove, it'll, from the backing data structure, remove whatever element I just returned from next, if that makes sense. I hope it's a little confusing, but so if I did has next when I was here, it would have returned true. I did next, my cursor moved, and I returned that element, and if I did remove, it would remove it from the backing data structure. 
So let's say I run has next right here. True, I have something here. Then I run next, I'm here, that got returned. Now let's say I don't call remove. Let's say I just keep, do has next, true, then I do next, moves here. Then I'll do next again. Oh yeah, so that was returned. This was returned. I do next again. Now I'll do next again. This was returned. Do next again. That's returned. Next again. Next again. Next again. Now I'm at the end. Or not quite the end. So I'll do next one more time. So what happens if I type in, if I run has next at this point? Or I'll do, I'll do next one last time. So it'll return that. So now after I've done next, I just returned every element in my iterator. So in my backing data structure. What happens if I call has next now? It would return false because there is no next element. I've already iterated through every single one of my elements. So if I call next anyways, it'll return null and it won't do anything because I don't have any more, no, there's no more elements to iterate through. So I, I hope that makes a bit of sense. Just remember iterator is a method that anything that implements this interface iterable has to have, it has to have this iterator method that iterator method creates a, an object of type iterator that has these three methods. Has next, which returns true if there is a next element to iterate through, or false if there isn't. Next, which returns whatever this next element is. And remove, which if next was called, will remove from the original data structure, not just from the iterator, but from this actual data structure. It'll remove whatever was just returned. So yeah, just to go back up, those are our three design patterns. Remember inheritance, oops, inheritance, oh, darn, whatever. So inheritance creates an is a, so a sports car is a car. Composition creates a has a relationship. So my body has a heart, has a lung, has a brain, and the iterator pattern, it's this. So I hope that helps. I, I noticed a lot of people tend to have trouble kind of wrapping their heads around it and noticing the differences. So I hope this highlights the differences at least.